Okay, there are only two places I've said it before that it talks about the number of his name, Revelation 13, 17, and Revelation 15, verse 2. Now, at the start of the Evidence Bible, which is really good, it talks about the different manuscripts that our modern-day translations post King James Bible have been uh, derived from. You have the Nestle Aland, which is all part of the Alexandrian text manuscripts, which includes the Cyanocardus, the Vaticanus, and then you have the majority text. Now, the majority text, they, they are so different. You've got Westcott and Hort there thrown in. They're two Anglican ministers from the UK back in the 1800s who heavily influenced the new versions that started springing up really from the 1880s onwards when the Jehovah's Witness and the Mormons came about and the Seven-day Adventists, all those cults came about in that decade is when the new Bibles started springing up. Now, a really nice, clever thing that, that, that this Bible has, when you read any scripture in any chapter, it'll have down the bottom NU text and M text. And I'll tell you what they've done compared to the Textus Receptus. See, the New King James and the King James Bible are based, well, the King James predominantly are based on the Textus Receptus, which is the received text in Greek and Hebrew for the Old Testament. And that can be trusted. These new versions under the Alexandrian manuscripts, uh, Cyanocarnus, Vaticanus, the Nestle Aland, Westcott and Hort, uh, Perversions are just, yeah, corrupt. All right, so I want to talk about, show you clearly in Revelation 13, 17. And no man, and no one may buy and sell except one who has the mark, then it's got an, a little a, or the name of the beast. Or the number of his name. See? Three things. No man shall buy or sell, save he that has the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Differentiating between the three things. That the mark isn't just the mark isn't uh the, the number of his name and the mark isn't the image, that they're, they're three separate things. It's like Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the, the Trinity. They're all it's all God. But they're three distinct personalities, three distinct uh, beings, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But they all work together as one. They're all considered God. Well, the mark and the mark system is part of the Antichrist being revealed and coming to the earth. And he has the mark, the number of his name, his image, and the beast. He's called the beast. And it makes a clear distinction here in, with the ors in the Textus Receptus. So in the NU text and the majority text, the majority text reads the same as the Textus Receptus, except for 85% of it. 85% of it reads the same as the Textus Receptus. 15% of it is, is, is changed or omitted. Or, and that majority of that 15% in the majority text is, falls in the book of Revelation. So that is something to consider. So the MU, NU text and the M text omit in Revelation 13, 17, the word or. See, the devil's very subtle. The very, devil's clear, very uh, calculated and he's uh, clever. He removes the word or. So in the original, the Bibles that are based on the NU text, which is the Alexandrian manuscripts, Sionicanus, Vaticanus, and the like, they have removed the word or. So the mark is just the image, and the image is the number of his name. There's just It's just like, so when the mark comes out, you can expect the image is there and the number of his name is there, right? There's no, oh, the, the number could come first, the image could come second, and the mark might be the very last thing in the rollout of the uh, draconian no man shall buy or sell beast system called the New World Order. See? So the ores are very important in there. 
Then we jump to chapter 15, 2, which is the second and final mention in the book of Revelation concerning the number of his name. Only two verses that talk about the number of his name, which is a lot of what my work is based on. And I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire and those who had gotten, those who had the victory over the beast, comma, over his image, and over his mark. See, there's an over. There's one, two, three overs and and an and in there. So that's similar to the three oars. Right, but when you get to the and over his mark, oh, look, there's a little a. What does the a mean? 15.2, the nu text and the m text remove over his mark. Hmm. So in those Bibles that uh, originally transcribed from these manuscripts, the NU and the majority text, you will have over his mark omitted. So it's just, it would read something like this. And I saw something like the sea of glass mingled with fire and those who had victory over the beast, comma, over his image. And that's it. Sorry, and over his, and over the number of his name. And the mark's gone. Why? Why take out the mark? Like, do you see the contradiction in the way they've taken the oars out in the previous first first mention of the number of his name, Revelation 13, 17, and then we get to 15, 2, and all of a sudden the three things uh, are mentioned there, victory over the beast, one, over his image, two, over his mark, three, over, his, over the number of his name is four, and so four things should be there, and only three things are there. Because the mark's taken out. You don't have to get victory over his mark. Really? So what do you do with everything that's written in chapter 14? About the mark being instituted and those that take it have the wine of the wrath of God poured upon them, which is the uh, trumpet judgments and the vials. The vials specifically are poured out upon the earth. And then, of course, if you don't end up in the right camp, you end up in hell and you end up with the wrath of God upon you forever because you're unredeemed and you're in hell eternal. So... Right. See how important it is to know what manuscript your Bible comes from? If you know nothing about this, this is a good place to start. Get the Evidence Bible and when you get to the first opening uh, prefaces and the contents and all the good stuff at the very start of this Bible, you'll read about uh, dynamic equivalent, uh, yeah, equivalence in translation, Complete equivalence in translation. You'll read about a little bit about Westcott and Hort, the new NU text. These variations from the traditional text generally represent the Alexandrian or Egyptian type of text described. You'll find out what the majority text is. And you'll come, hopefully, come to realize how important Bibles are that are based on the Textus Receptus. Thanks for listening.